I found out I got more out of it than I thought I would. Cool. Um, absorbing the same, the same teaching, the same mm-hmm. uh, praise, the same uh, study that the kids mm-hmm. are doing, studying right along with them. She, she demanded separation. Mm-hmm. One month later, she uh, filed for divorce. So I moved back back aboard the ship, spent the remainder of my tour on uh, mm-hmm. living on the USS Mobile. And that was a dark time. Mm-hmm. Throughout the years, I mean, you just did what God was bringing to you. Like you responded to the chaplains at different times. You were reading scripture. You were teaching the Sunday school class at the church. You... This is NCC Unplugged. Thank you so much for joining us again for another episode of NCC Unplugged. We have another excellent episode ready for you here as we are going to interview one of our NCC members and just uh, get to know someone. Uh, He's joined in the, joining me in the studio today. His name is Ken Blunt. Thank you for inviting me, Jeff. Absolutely. And you've heard some of these interviews before where we just get to know someone here at the church and be encouraged by their story. And so I've gotten to know Ken over the years, uh, just in different capacities Mm -hmm. and Many of you listening, if you attend NCC, you've probably seen him, uh, but maybe you haven't heard anything from him. Uh, So he'll speak to it in a little bit that uh, he plays guitar up on stage probably almost every single Sunday you're up there. Um, And so you've, like I've said, you've probably seen him uh, for for a good bit, but now you get to hear from him a little bit. So we're excited to hear your story, Ken. Yeah, he actually does have a voice. How about that? Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, We're excited about that. So... Uh, can tell us just uh, the, some raw facts about your family. Okay. Um, well, right now, um, it's just me and my wife, Maria. We're uh, empty nesters. Our children are all grown. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is our second marriage okay. for both of us. And so I had uh, three children from my first marriage. She had uh, a son from her first marriage. And they're all 40-year-old. You know, actually, yeah, all of them are in their 40s now, adults. Okay. With uh, seven grandchildren now. Wow. So, yeah. So, it, it's a challenge to get into, get into see everybody at least just once a year. Yeah. So, empty nesters for a while then? Yes. Enjoying that season of life? Yes. Actually, pretty much empty nesters the entire time we've been at NCC. Okay. Okay. Retired? Retired, yes. Happily retired. How, how, how many years have you been retired now? Uh, let's see. It's uh, been... Uh, a little over three years now. Okay, so where did you retire from? Where were you working? I was uh, my last uh, place of employment was the Westinghouse Electric Company. Every now and then, you'll see me with the Westinghouse logo on my shirt, and not so much advertising the company. It's just the shirts fit so well, you know. And they're real good quality <laughs> shirts. You know why? Why throw them away? <laughs> so, were you an engineer there? Where, what were you doing at Westinghouse? I was a, a project controls specialist, and what we do is um, uh, we. Uh, maintain the budget, the project's budget. We uh, maintain the project schedule. Uh, we may do some risk analysis and some little other little tasks that, that the project manager uh, would normally be responsible for. But quite frankly, he's got so much on his plate that he's going to need some help, particularly in the big projects. And the real mm-hmm. tiny ones, one guy could do it all by himself. Mm-hmm. Or one person nowadays could do it all by themselves. But in the bigger projects, yeah, they, they really do need help. Okay. Good, good. So now let's go way back. Tell us about growing up. Was that around Pennsylvania here for you? Where did you grow up? What was that like, early life? Actually, I was born in Massachusetts. Oh, okay. And I grew up in the church. I was going to bring this up, was that I didn't have that 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 adult flash moment where gone from going from, say, uh, contrary to the church and all of a sudden have a flash moment, oh, you know, I'm, I'm a converted born-again believer. Mm-hmm. It was more like a, like a gradual slope. You know, it's, um, in fact, my great-grandparents are, or my great-parents were, uh, Swedish immigrants. Hmm. And so the Lutheran church is the predominant, Christian denomination mm-hmm. in Sweden and Norway, so they brought their um, their Lutheran denomination with them. Gotcha. Uh, they settled somewhere near the first Lutheran church in Waltham, Massachusetts, hmm. and so my grandmother, their daughter, uh, she grew up in the church. Actually, they had like four kids, and they all grew up in the church, right? And they had their families, and so she had among them my my dad. He was the the youngest of three. And so he grew up in that church, lived in Waltham all his adult life or all his formative life. 
And then, um, actually, my mom got married there, and then they had me, and I was baptized there, Christian there, Christian there. Um, and so that's where I started through my preschool years. And got to be frank, you know, when you're a preschooler, church is is not about oh worshiping Jesus. No, church is about having to wear these these uncomfortable uh, dressy <laughs> clothes, and you got to sit still, yeah. and you got to be quiet and stuff, and all the stuff that's contrary to your normal preschooler. Yeah. So it wasn't wasn't that much fun back in right. those days. I, I distinctly remember uh, one time in our little children's churchy thing uh, that uh, I got to extinguish the candles, and that was a big deal. But um, <laughs> that, that aside, was was it was it was not not fun. Yeah. Um, we moved to Maryland when I was in first grade. My dad got a um, um, not a promotion. He was a sales representative, so he he got assigned a territory in the mm. South Atlantic United States, and so we settled between Baltimore and Washington in Glen Burnie, Maryland, which seemed to have worked out well for him. And uh, turned out there was a little Lutheran church, um, really could have been within walking distance since we always drove anyway. But um, it was a you know small. It was it had to be smaller than what NCC was back before uh, oh, yeah. the expansion. Okay. Um, but that was, um, that was formative for me. Um, I, I did some church service, you might say. Um, I was in the choir, mm. don't know how well I sung back then, but what it did do for me is it did introduce me to the gospel. Mm. It introduced me to reading because you'd have to sing that the same songs that the rest of the adult, adult congregation was singing. And so you have to learn these words Oh, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? As you get a little older, you so it all sort of all runs together. But like uh, uh, ponder anew what the Almighty can do, you know that sort of stuff. Uh, that that still rings somewhere in the back of my yeah. head. So anyway, uh, we were with them all the way through sixth grade. Oh, okay. So while I was there, this was up. The name of the church was Peace Lutheran Church beautiful, you know, small church community. And that's where I got introduced to VBS, the Vacation mm. Bible School. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very positive experience for me because, among other things, I learned the 23rd Psalm. There was one mm. one year where that's what they focused on, okay, uh, recite it. And, yeah. and, you know, start with one, one verse here, verse here, verse and, and you're like one verse each day or some a couple of verses each day to, until you got by the end of the last day you got the whole thing memorized mm -hmm. and it sticks with you forever and then there was another one year where we would did john three sixteen, okay. and and um like once again you know a little piece here a little piece there mm -hmm. a little piece here mm -hmm. until by friday you got it all all memorized we'd sing songs that ring forever um uh i i'd love to tell the story Learn. I remember okay. learning that when I was like seven or eight. Mm -hmm. and, and so that what I got from the VBS, at, looking back on it as an adult, was this was an incredible uh, teaching tool mm -hmm. for small children. Mm -hmm. And that is the reason why I volunteer at VBS here. Cool. Yeah. Be just be just to be part of it, just to be supportive. And you know, even though as as a crew leader, I'm just you know, uh, leading the cattle from one station to the next, <laughs> but but more like a cowboy than, than yeah. an evangelist. But um, but yeah, I I, I I support wholeheartedly just because I remember the positive impact it had on my life. Yeah, no, that's really cool that you bring that up because I mean you're giving back now from what you received right. all the way back. And so those memories are inspiring you to create those for others, which is Hopefully which is I do, yeah. Yeah, very cool. But eighth grade was also another important milestone. I, I consider VBS one of the important milestones mm -hmm. in my Christian walk just because that was uh, like an aha time where, cool. aha, mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that enlightens me a little bit. And um, when I was in the eighth grade, I remember it was Easter. We went to some church close to the hotel mm -hmm. in, um, in Miami. And I remember, can't remember much about the service, but I remember when we entered, there was like a, a lady who was the greeter. She was very kind, very nice, and 
quite frankly, in the Lutheran Church, you know, they're not, we're, we're, we weren't um, God's frozen people, but we're pretty, pretty close to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not God's chosen people, we're God's frozen people. Uh, but anyway, um, we didn't have that that kind of you know greeting. Oh, 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 oh you're a visitor. Oh, oh, okay. how nice to see. You. I'm glad you're you're worshiping with yeah. us. That's e- everybody's more reserved. What you're very used reserved. To. Yeah, okay. yeah. You pick your seat and you, you've got it forever. Right? Yeah. That, you, and the guy in front of you, you have no clue. You've seen the back of his head for for months and years. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't know what it looks like on the front. <laughs> um, but um, but this was like a wow. This is so, and I feel huh. so comfortable here. Yeah, isn't that funny? Just a different church experience yeah. has given you this enlightenment. Yeah, yeah. that and um, the Sunday school teacher we had when I was in the eighth grade. Can't, oh, yeah, Tilly McFarland was her name. I was going to say, I remember her first name, but couldn't remember the last name. It was Tilly McFarland, and maybe I was just getting a little older, a little more mature, brain developed a little better, mm-hmm. but what she was teaching really hit home hmm. and and like i remember there was one one sunday or maybe a series of sundays where um she went through um was it the seven last sentences jesus hmm. um was quoted um as he was dying on the cross and i was like i was i was captivated hmm. and i was like wow really yeah and then you go back and you research oh yeah 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 so that was probably a very formative time for me. And, yeah. and I guess that might equate to like bar mitzvahs and bas mitzvahs for the, with the Jewish children. Right around that age. Right, around that same age, age frame. Flash forward, um, rest of high school, I'm, I'm still attending church mm-hmm. regularly, got some sort of relationship with Jesus. Um, it's a lot of other influences, um, rock music, which is not bad. Um, but... The friends I hung out with, they weren't necessarily bad, but they were, they, their grades weren't as good as mine. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. Their grades weren't as good as mine, um, and they were not at least regular church attenders. So looking back on these days, I was like, why on earth would my parents, why on earth would, would God put me in, in that circle of friends? Mm-hmm. And then I, it came to me, it was, Maybe I was the anchor, yeah. holding them from going even even further out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Graduated from high school, college, going to the college. Um, made it, met uh, met the girl who became who had become my wife. Um, yes, I made mistakes. Um, uh, she became pregnant thanks to me, and um, and then we got married. Um, my parents. Uh, uh, actually, it was more like my mother's idea. It says, you're going to get married. Yeah. Oh, really? My, my dad came up with a solution. Said, but you two can live with us until you until okay. you graduate. So okay. I spent the last two years of my college um, um, commuting back and forth and um, working part time and, mm-hmm. and trying to uh, make it work. Trying to make it you work. Guys are young. Yep. 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 Um, among the among the mistakes, we, she and I, my my new wife and I, we had uh, two different church backgrounds. Okay. Uh, I grew up in the Lutheran church, and uh, she was Catholic. Mm-hmm. So we had some essential beliefs that were common, and the rest of the stuff was not common. Very different, yeah. So um, she never really joined the Lutheran church with me, mm-hmm. and I wasn't going to join the Catholic church with her. hmm so we'd have two separate worships, um, and she was not a, a frequent worshiper, unlike me. Um, and so even as eventually I got a full-time job after, after college and we we're, we're lived in our own place, mm-hmm. uh, we're still going two separate yeah. um, church directions. And that stayed and actually until I joined the Navy. I entered the Navy through the Officer Candidate School, Newport, Rhode Island. And after 17 weeks there, I went to um, Navy Supply Corps School in Athens, Georgia mm. for six months of training. And for that one, I could bring my family. By now, it's it's me, my first wife, Jill, and we had three kids. Okay. Three little kids. And uh, so um, we set up shop there. I'm doing the classes uh, full-time. 
and uh, getting paid for it for a change. And then, um, and we were living in uh, like a housing there on the, on the Navy school. And initially we were attending the um, services at, at the, uh, the chapel on the base. Okay. And um, somehow Jill met uh, uh, some lady who belonged to Athens Christian Church, a local Christian church in, okay. in Athens, Georgia, and invited us there. And we went there and, yeah, okay. It wasn't, wasn't like, flash, oh, their theology is so much better. Mm -hmm. At least for me, it was like, yeah, okay. And, and, and she was, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like, okay. I, I, don't, I think she didn't like the idea of being a military spouse mm -hmm. and didn't, you know, like all the military is all, you know, running through our veins and stuff. Uh, so anything she could do to get off, off the base was good. But again, it was a very warm and, and welcoming um, uh, congregation. They, they're particularly good for a, a family with three little kids. Mm. And um, we became close with the, uh, the, uh, the, men, the members there. And so we were there for s six months. And then uh, my next duty station was in Long Beach, California. Ooh, yeah. that's a big change. And I, had, I had to ask my mom, where's Long Beach? <laughs> Because she, she said she had grown up in Long Beach or lived there for a couple of years. Where's Long Beach? Yeah. <laughs> and she said, oh, it's near Los Angeles. Oh, okay. <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, sounds pretty cool. Sounds cool, yeah. So, yeah, so we transferred out there, and eventually we settled in some Navy housing mm -hmm. because, let's face it, the rents and the mortgages that were in California were, were just as bad then as they are now. It's really super expensive. And... Um, I settled in a place called Los Alamitos, California, which is eight miles from Disneyland's parking lot, by the way. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. So my one year, my kids got uh, um, season passes to Disneyland. Uh, that was the year I, I had to deploy to the West, to the um, Western Pacific. So while I was gone, Jill and the kids could go to Disneyland yeah. every day. And that was, that was beautiful for them. Um, but um, nearby on Knott Avenue in Anaheim, California, was the Not Avenue Christian Church? Hmm. Ah, uh, well, yeah, we went to Athens Christian Recognize Church. It. We yeah. liked it. So the Not Avenue Christian Church was great. It really was um, much bigger, though. It was I won't say a mega church, but it was certainly bigger than anything I had been in before. Mm -hmm. And there was a um, the preaching minister. His name was Floyd Strader, and he, he's deceased by now, I'm sure. And um, Floyd. Um, had some speaking problems, um, almost like sort of stuttering mm -hmm. until he got fired up. <laughs> and so his sermons would start out, you know, you know sort of like, like a bumpy road. And then as he got fired up, he was like, wow, this guy is huh. really inspirational. Yeah. So how long were you guys out in California About for? Two and a half years. Okay. Then the Navy tours, uh, they rotate like every two and a half, two years okay. or so. And so uh, my dad was, he and my mom had divorced, and he was back in Massachusetts. Hmm, my dad lives in Massachusetts. Maybe hmm, a good time to right try to get a little closer to him again. Well, in reality, geography-wise, we weren't that close mm. to him. He was still like about, about an 80-minute drive mm. you know, from one spot to the other. Um, so we were living in the housing area at the Coast Guard Air Station in Cape Cod. And um, they had a little chapel there. Um, this was like a military chapel community. Yeah. Unlike the, the, the home churches where, you know, families grow up in there and mm -hmm. then just, you know, Stick multiply, yeah. right? You know, it starts like with, a, with a, like a handful of families and just sprouts like, like, um, like being fruitful and multiply. But in the military community, people are being rotated in and out, in and out, in and out. So um, a, you get a mix of theologies, and you also get a mix of uh, uh, racial um, uh, ethnic yeah. ethnicities. And I got to tell you, it's a great experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had, we'd have black, we'd have white, we'd have Hispanic, we've had Asian, and... Uh, 
and everybody got together. And, and you know, it, it, we talk about it a little bit in our sermons, right? You know, I mean, Joshua had a great one just this past Sunday, but I got to see it in real life. Yeah. And it's it's really heartwarming. It really very is. Cool. It's, it's very cool. Very cool. Yeah. 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 So, so as we have visitors who don't look like us come in, mm-hmm. I'm always, yes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going to love this. <laughs> yeah. I, a lot of times we need to be reminded that's going to be what heaven looks like. Right? Yes. People yeah. that we've never met, people from all over the world. Um, and you, I mean, I think military families are unique in that, and that you do get to see a lot of the world and a lot of other things that those of us that are more local to a certain area don't get to see all the time. And experience it, too. Yeah. So you're in Massachusetts. Keep keep moving forward. Okay. Um, how long How long are you in the Navy for? Um, your, your total? Active for yeah. 12 years and then 10 years reserve. I'm getting there, by okay. the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, so at this time, around this time, things are really going well for us. Um, spiritually, you know, we're, mm-hmm. I'm active in the church. Of course, we're, we're, I've got... In fact, there was one year where um, Jill and I were the um, were running the the youth group mm. for for the um, for that chapel community. And again, it helps when you have kids that age, right? Okay, yeah. so somebody's got to do it, right? So yeah, we'll do it. So we did that one year, and uh, and so Jill and I were that was that was our maybe our best of times, mm. and uh, then it sort of came to a screeching halt. Uh, I was. Um, we bought a house, actually. We bought a house outside the base. First time we'd, we'd bought a house. First time being a homeowner. As my, my uncle used to say, congratulations, you're now a homeowner. Not a homeowner, you're a homeowner. Um, and, um, and so um, thinking, oh, yeah, everything's going really well. Uh, my next duty station uh, was still in the area. Uh, my daily commute from, from where we were living on Cape Cod up to Weymouth, Massachusetts, was roughly about, it was over an hour. So it might have been like 75 minutes, 75, 80 minutes commute. Um, my next duty station was on a ship out of Newport, Rhode Island, which was, I remember the mileage, it was 54 miles one way to, to Weymouth, and it was 54 miles in another direction from our house to the naval base in Newport, Rhode Island. And again, roughly about an hour and a quarter commute. Nothing like getting up at like 4, 4.30 in the morning <laughs> just, just to get to the ship before, before Reveille and all the, all the, um, all the business starts. Um, but that um, had, had some consequences. The, the advantage behind it was, oh yeah, we, that way we don't we have to move the kids out of this, this great community and stuff mm-hmm. and we can get another two and a half years of, of exposure here and stuff and, and they get to be with their friends now they're getting in the high school age type stuff. And then, um, so being a department head on a Navy warship um, has, has a lot of responsibility mm-hmm. and is very, very demanding of your time and your efforts and, and oftentimes, even though, yeah, we, we know about the six-month deployment where every 18 months the ship's got to go out and, and deploy for six months. And, uh, but in between that time, there's you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, engineering inspections, mm-hmm. uh, test runs, refresher training, and you go out for maybe two, three days or maybe go out for a couple of weeks and mm-hmm. see for a couple of weeks. And um, so this took its toll on Jill because um, uh, even though the, the saying goes, the, uh, the, the Navy wife or the Navy spouse, I should say, the Navy spouse is the hardest job in the Navy. Mm. Uh, she didn't quite buy that. <laughs> and, um, and she was working at the time as a projectionist. Um, I'm sorry, she was working as the manager of the uh, movie theater on okay. the, the base where we were living. And then she fell in love with a projectionist, and eventually she demanded a separation. Mm. One month later, she uh, filed for divorce. So I moved back uh, back aboard the ship, spent the remainder of my tour on uh, wow. living on the USS Mobile, and that was a dark time. Mm-hmm. And um, you've probably seen the the um, uh, like a painting or some sort of picture uh, with a, a little story about the, the, the footprints in the sand. 
Yeah. And the, mm-hmm. the guy, um, or I should say the person, um, as, as, uh, as their life comes to an end, they review their life and they, they see along the, the, the journey of their life uh, two pairs of footprints, mm-hmm. and that's them and Jesus. And then the, sometimes there's only one pair of footprints, yeah. and the person says, Jesus, why would you abandon me? Yep. And Jesus said, I didn't abandon you. That's when I was carrying you. Mm-hmm. Well, that's where I was mm. during that dark time. That, that's when Jesus was carrying me. Um, was that something that anchored you in your faith? Because now you're at home going through all this and was just left by your wife. Is is this? Are these services what are keeping you afloat? Essentially, yeah, I would say it was more like uh, hanging on by my fingernails. Mm. So after my ship out of Newport, the USS Alwyn. Um, I was trans. My next transfer uh, wound me up in um, Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland, and um, that's where I met Maria. Okay, she was working for the DC Air National Guard. In fact, I met her at the officers' club one night. I spotted her, and uh, it was funny because uh, this was back in the days of pay phones, and there was a line of pay phones against the wall. I saw her with like four of her. Um, friends, uh, all, all women, and I said, why is she alone? I, I, assuming she's, she's, a, she's an Air Force wife, the wife of some Air Force officer mm-hmm. at the officer's club. I'm thinking, why is she alone? I mean, if, if that were my wife, she wouldn't be alone. I'd be, I'd be with her, you know. And, and, and so, um, so um, I can realize that, uh-oh, I'm staring quite a lot. <laughs> so, so I pick up a pay phone. I don't put any money in, but I pick up a payphone, pr- pretend like I'm on the phone talking. I'm just gla- happy glancing in her direction while I'm talking on the phone. And then they move. I said, well, if I, if I keep tracking her while, while I just keep staring at her while I'm, I'm pretending, to, pretending to talk on the phone, uh, that's going to look really <laughs> obvious. So, okay. so I, If it hasn't well, already. If it hasn't already, right. So I, I walked over and um, introduced, her, introduced myself I um, had this great pickup line. I said, do you ladies know of any exciting places around here? Because this place is really dead. <laughs> well, I, what I didn't realize, one of her friends was the wife of the general manager of the, of the officer's club. <laughs> <laughs> but so they were going out to another place, uh, uh, a place called Legends uh, in Waldorf. And, um, okay, let's go down there. And, and so she offered to, to ride with me because... I was brand new to the area, didn't know the area. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she's taking quite a, quite a risk. She doesn't know me, but she just had this sense that, yeah, he must be okay. I, yeah. And, and uh, so we, and it turned out um, just as my, uh, my first marriage had, had crumbled, around the same time, within one week of, of mine, hers did too. Hmm. So it was like God was answering our prayers individually. Yeah. Wow. And so I backtrack about a week before that. Um, I had just arrived there, um, got off the phone with Jill, making sort of some sort of um, arrangements to see my kids. Right at that time, she's living in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, um, and so I'm making arrangements to see the kids on the weekend. And after after I got the phone with with her, I remember like just walking. Uh, look with my head down and praying and said, well, okay, God, I'm here now. What now do we, what do we do? You know, what's, what's next. And within a week he answered my prayer Wow! and he answered her prayer too. Mm-hmm. So we met and, um, initially as we were dating, she, um, she was attending the Catholic services mm-hmm. on, on the base. And because she's from the Philippines and uh, the Catholicism is like 95% of the, the yeah, Filipino uh, population, very, very, very heavily Catholic. And uh, I was in the, the Protestant uh, um, congregation at Andrews and she realized that this isn't good. You know, why am I going to my church? He's going to his church. So she took the first step and she, cool. she, uh, she crossed the line to the, to yeah. the Protestant community um, and so there we were. We got married about yeah about a year later, a year and a half later. Yeah, and then everything was rolling. Um, I was 
at Andrews for about four years. And then my active duty time came to a close. Okay. Um, the Navy was not going to promote me any further. And they gave me seven months to, to find another job. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's very nice, you know. They give you seven months of, of severance pay, so I can't I can't really complain too much. Um, during my job search in D.C. area, I went to a job fair. Um, there were a couple of guys from a Westinghouse division uh, uh, in Pittsburgh that uh, serviced the Navy's nuclear reactor um, program. We have we still have a couple of members here who um, who uh, yeah. work there. Actually, maybe three. And anyway. Um, so they liked my resume. They, they noticed that my, my background was exactly the same as the guy, some, one guy who's, who's uh, being promoted to a manager position and they had to fill a slot and they found, saw my background was exactly the same as his. So, cool. ooh, we got ourselves. It might a, just fit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, great fit. Yeah. So, so um, that was 96, 1996. Okay. And so we moved to Plum, rented mm-hmm. a place in Plum. Um, and, um, looking for another church, I found, uh, the Monroeville Christian church. Mm-hmm. Matt's probably heard of that one. <clears throat> and, um, in fact, uh, back when we were there, um, uh, I remember Matt's sister, uh, Allison was a teenager. Mm-hmm. Matt was probably a teenager too. I don't really recall him. Remember your dad though. Remember your dad. And, uh, Lindsay Wilson was a teenager yep. back then. Yep. And, uh, there's been like a lot of former Monroeville Christian Church uh, members came here. So we were um, there a couple years, living in Plum, renting a place. Finally, we were able to break out of the rental uh, syndrome and uh, buy a house here in North Huntington. And um, when we were at, at Monroeville, uh, I remember one day, um, one of the deacons maybe, uh, came up to Maria and said, there's a lady here who's, um, she's Chinese, and she just walked in, and so we're, we're trying to find somebody who can communicate with her. Mm-hmm. Well, Maria doesn't speak Chinese. Yeah. The, woman had, the, the lady uh, spoke some broken English, and, okay. and Maria speaks broken English, so maybe that was, that was a, a common <laughs> language. Um, but um, anyway, so, so um, they became friends. It's okay. a very, very nice lady, by the way. And... Um, and then turned out she bought a house here in North Huntington in our in our neighborhood. Hmm. I think she bought hers before we bought ours. It wasn't like we were stalking her, just so so happened that yeah, we have we understand it's a nice place to live. So we moved there. And then she said that she had found this Norwin Christian church a little closer to home. Yeah. And same theology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're a nice place. So we said, okay, we'll try it. And I would say it was it wasn't so much the the, the the theology or the worshiping style was was that much better for us than, than Monroeville. Not as bad, but it was hey, this is better, much better commute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so a lot a lot easier to find. So that was 98, 1998, and we've been here since. Nice. And um, I had already been baptized back in '84 when we were in Athens Christian Church. Mm. And, but Maria had not been yet okay. immersed. And so that took her about, yeah, about a year or so. And she finally you cool. know, overcame her shyness. And, and, yeah, and cool. Since then, it's been um, you know, a gradual escalation mm-hmm. in our spiritual life. Um, members here, attending here, about nine years, watching the, excuse me, watching the... Um, the worship team. Yeah. And I could feel the Holy Spirit nudging me in the ribs. Mm-hmm. You know, you played guitar when you were when you were a teenager in college and stuff. You know, you could do that. And um, but nah, 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 I got all these excuses. Nah, 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 nah. And then Terry Irwin gave a sermon. Um uh, somewhere uh, talking so talk about um I don't don't um, uh, hide your light under a under mm. a basket or something mm-hmm. like that, and, and, and yeah, I mean, there's there's scripture. And that's a quote from Jesus, and I can't remember the exact quote, but you know, the general idea. And that was it. Okay, wow. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Lord, I hear you. <laughs> 
so after the service, I, I walked up to the stage and, and um, offered my services to Ken and Ken Sevick. And, and he said, oh, great. We've been praying for another guitar player. Wow. Wow. Okay. I'm the answer to your prayers. Yeah. Well, I wasn't quite ready yet. But <laughs> my skills weren't, weren't, were pretty rusty, but. Yeah. But that was 2008, maybe. And been doing it ever since. Been huh? doing it ever since. Wow. Yeah. That is so cool. That's so cool. So at your time at NCC, how do you think, so God was, you know, the Holy Spirit was prompting you to, to make that decision to play guitar. What are some other things that you've found yourself growing in as a Christian uh, since you've been part of NCC here? I would say, um, I'll stick for first off with, with the worship team, because a lot of the lyrics that we, we sing in, mm-hmm. the, in our songs are quotes from scripture. Yeah. You know, built around quotes from scripture. So I found that was building up my the insides. How how, how do you say it? And, but building that that or, or strengthening my relationship with the Holy Spirit, maybe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it just it gives you more of a foundation when when things go wrong. Mm-hmm. Then they, all, of a, all of a sudden it comes back to you. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, that in itself, um, I talked earlier about why I was volunteering with VBS. Yeah. 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 And, um, for a while when we had the, the shine program, the supplemental help in Norman education, a tutoring program, right. The tutoring program, um, the, uh, I think we called it back then was, it was associate minister Mm -hmm. guy named, uh, Scott Schmidt Mm -hmm. and his wife, Michelle, Mm -hmm. she was, um, a school teacher. And so she's the one who actually brought that to NCC. Yeah. And it was just one of these um, days where, you know, all the ministries, ministry fair days, uh, okay. they, they set up the shop. Everybody's got a table Everybody's with what they got do a at table. the church. Yep. And I'm just walking around, looking around. So, hmm, shine. Oh, that looks interesting. And, and Michelle starts writing my name down. <laughs> 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 oh, well, yeah, I can't think of a good reason why I wouldn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I can I can tutor math. Yeah. I'm pretty good at math. Yeah, I can tutor math. Uh, so the, once again, it was one of those opportunities for me to to give back a little bit mm-hmm. to, to the, uh, the children, to the youth of mm-hmm. our community mm-hmm. um, to try to help them, even if it wasn't, say, directly spiritual. Yeah. It was, you know, something at least was sort of coated with uh, with love. And so we did, I did that until, until uh, Shine had run its course. Mm-hmm. Um, when I retired in 2021, I realized, I, the way I, I saw it was, was God had given me 40 hours back. Mm. So no longer was I having to work for 40 hours a, a week yeah. uh, at a full-time job. And so I got 40 hours of my life back every week. So at least in the spirit of tithing, I'd like to give some of it back. Cool. And um, part of it was spending more time working on on the the, the Sunday services with the worship mm. team. Uh, but um, I mean, you were just gone for an entire week at CIY. Right, gone for an entire so that's week. even more than a tithe of your time. Right, that's right. 24 right. hours a day VBS, with these kids yeah. for a week, VBS. Right. Um, and, uh, yeah, so getting to the um, the CIY. So once Jonathan Slatt became the mm-hmm. youth minister, um, of course, he's also playing in the in the, in the the um, worship team. So we're, we're buddies from the worship team. Yeah. And, and so he says, hey... Um, you know, we got this thing called CIY, and uh, I, I need a, need another uh, male sponsor. Uh, all you got to do is drive the vehicle. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I found out I got more out of it than I thought I would. Cool. Um, absorbing the same the same teaching, the same mm-hmm. uh, praise, the same uh, study that the kids mm-hmm. are doing, studying right along with them. Um, so I'm getting what they're getting. Cool. And um, actually making friends with these with these yeah. uh, young people. Yeah. 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 Ken, something I keep hearing in your story that I think is encouraging, and I just want to point out, throughout the years, I mean, you just did what God was bringing to you. Like, you responded to the chaplains at different times. You were reading scripture. You were teaching the Sunday school class at the church. You were, uh, you know, now in the band. Like... 
it just seems like wherever God brings you in life, you're just like, okay, God, I'll do something for you. It's just neat to hear that your life spans so many different things, and throughout all of that, your faithfulness to God was that thread that um, tied everything together, and, and God continued to be with you in the divorce mm-hmm. and then meeting a new woman, a new wife, and um, working with student. Like, it just... I can see God's hand in all of that, and, and your response has just been, okay, I'll be faithful in this, you know, and it may not on the outside look like some big grand thing, but man, going all the way back to VBS, like just these little tiny things throughout it all. Right. Um, so one question I like to ask as we wrap up, and um, just really appreciate you sharing your life story a little bit, um, what is one act of kindness that someone did for you that you will never forget? I'm putting you on the spot and then prep you for this question. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, bring up the, the most recent one. Okay. Here at VBS. Mm-hmm. So I'm the crew leader and I'm um, picking up the, um, the, the, the backpack. We got, you know, each, each uh, crew, each team has their, their own little backpack and ours is full of stuff mm-hmm. and I when I picked it up I picked up the wrong end and and everything fell out uh. of the floor and this one little girl she wasn't the what we call the designated bag lady you know the, the back uh-huh. backpack wear but uh, she wanted to appoint herself as the assistant oh, okay and so here I am picking up all this stuff that I just dropped on the floor I said can I help you cool a little kid had that kind of Enthusiasm, enthusiasm to help. Enthusiasm yeah. to help. Says, oh yeah, thank you. But I'm thinking, nice. I'm never going to forget this. Yeah. You know, if I see somebody with a flat tire, I'm, I'm driving by, I think, you idiot, you, <laughs> a little kid helped you. Why couldn't you help? Yeah. With them? Yeah. Mm. That's good. Well, thanks for that encouragement. Can really appreciate you sharing uh, with us and your church family just about your story and how God has uh, brought you through a lot of things and still, you know, no matter how old we get, God still works on us and teaches us things and so. Um, feel free to say hi to Ken next time you see him up on stage. Uh, introduce yourself and, and get to know him a little bit as part of our church family. Just want to thank you again for listening to an episode of NCC Unplugged. Have a great week. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you for tuning in to NCC Unplugged. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we encourage you to share this with your friends and family. NCC Unplugged is available on all major podcast platforms. And if you're ever interested in experiencing Norwin Christian Church firsthand, we invite you to join us for our services every Sunday at 8.45 and 10.30 a.m. We have engaging classes available for all ages, ensuring there's something meaningful for everyone in our church community. For more information about NCC or any other inquiries, visit norwinchristianchurch.com. 